So throughout all of this, there is still love being poured down to us from the divine. But there's also wisdom surrounding. The wisdom energy, it's not easy, but that's why it's got a, this like ooey gooey center of unconditional love within it. This is a lesson in unconditional love. Like we're getting a pill of love. The love is in the center. Encapsulating the love is wisdom, is higher awareness, is understanding. That is a pretty bitter pill to swallow, isn't it? Hi everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your gener general collective energy reading. Yes, please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading. Um, uh, I mean, it, the, the, y'all know the drill. And if you're new, hi, welcome. This is fairly a timeless reading. However, what we're, I feel like what we're gonna be discussing today is um, a little more time sensitive. That happens, you know, when we're going through some big stuff, um, we tend to talk about what's going on in the current moment. So if you're watching this like later on, way on down the road, then maybe it'll resonate for you. I'm not sure, but anyway, hi guys. Uh, so, um, I'm moving a little bit slow this morning. Uh, it's kind of, it's a rough moment right now for the collective, isn't it? Um, many of us or many of you have been expressing how, you know, how rough things are right now for everybody universally. And it's interesting because this is all post Lionsgate energy that we're, that we're feeling, that we're moving through right now. and and. You know, I would have thought, I kind of actually was was under the impression, it, it's not like anybody told me this or anything, I just felt like it, but I was under the impression when there, once we crossed through this lion's gate, I mean, things were going to be so much better, things were going to be so much easier, at least on an energetic level, but uh, what I'm hearing is that we're going through a purification process right now, and so that's causing a lot to come up for us um there's a lot of, there's a lot of processing happening there's a lot of change that's happening um and what we're going through right now is um i just heard an external process but i what i feel like that is translating into is um we're dealing with certain external circumstances and the energies surrounding those circumstances and also the emotions surrounding those circumstances. Processing them, healing them, clearing them and letting them go so that what it is we're moving forward towards the new that is meant to be coming into our lives so that we can create space for that. I mean, that may sound cliche, that may not necessarily want to be or be what you want to hear at the moment, but that's what's coming through for the collective. That's the little bit of, in, of collective encouragement that's coming through there. So, okay. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, this is... I, I'm, I'm having a tough time. I'm really having a tough time with this. Um, and I, 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 I woke up this morning kind of, um, I don't know, in a really strange place. I went to bed last night in a very strange place also. Uh... And I personally am needing some encouragement. I'm not feeling like all that motivated to do morning coffee, but I'm hearing myself say yes. And I'm hearing spirit say, yes, let's do morning coffee because I mean, I need the encouragement. So I can only imagine how you guys feel. Although I'm, I don't need to imagine how you guys feel. We're all kind of in the same boat, right? Okay. Um, but what I've really come to understand about this time period right now is that this is a massive exercise in learning how to surrender and learning how to let go. Um, I know for me personally, I'm, I'm in the thick of some, in some situations where it's like I really have, I have, I, I, there's nothing I can do. I literally, at this point, like things have happened. We are where we are, this, that, and the third. Okay. 
um, but I literally just have to surrender because there's nothing else that I can do other than just let the universe handle it. And obviously, you know, when the, when the moment comes in which I can take action or I can be assertive, then I will. <laughs> but it feels like those moments are few and far between, don't you think, right now? Like, it's like there are these moments where we have this burst of activity. We do, do, do. We get some things done. We handle this, we handle that, this, that, and the third. And then it all just stops. And it seems like, or it feels like, everything is coming to, or things come to a screeching halt. And you're left with no other option but to surrender. And that's where I am right now. I, I, that's where I've been for the last few months, like ever since May, really. At least in the current circumstances with some of the energies that are surrounding me right now, it's been since May. But actually, it really, when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, it's been much, much longer than that. You could even say that it's been since the pandemic started that, you know, we've been all in this universal holding pattern where it's just, we're literally at the mercy. Uh, I don't even want to say that, but it is true. It's like we're at the mercy either of the universe, of the collective energies, of the process, or we're at the mercy of those who hold power and are literally dictating our lives for us in many cases. And... I mean, I don't want to get into that, but but it just feels like this is like the ultimate lesson in surrender. Now, the other aspect of this time period is not just an aspect of surrender uh, explicitly. Like we're not just being like held back and just being told to sit in a corner and twiddle our thumbs. That's not that's not it. There, we literally we have to surrender to the process, but in this surrender, you guys, we have a, a perfect vantage point, I want to say, in terms of seeing clearly exactly what is going on around us. And with, I mean, like, it, it's, it's interesting because it, it seems like you know, there are dark energies or dark individuals, uh, dark intentions that are being imposed upon us, or there are individuals that are under the control of dark or negative energies or negative beings, and they are exerting some form of control or are, are, are going hard body trying to really exert some sort of control over the collective, over the masses. And they're effectively stopping our lives. They're literally pushing the, not even the pause button, but the stop button on our lives, right? And we're left to surrender. But also at the same time, I kind of feel like this ultimately will backfire because in this surrender, we have nothing in many cases, especially when like the lockdowns were happening and there are more lockdowns happening now and then. Okay, right, okay. But in this moment of surrender, we have no other choice but just to stop and observe. And the more you observe, the more absurd things start to seem or things start to, you start to realize they are. Or I kind of, what I'm hearing is the more absurd things be, start to become. But it's not out of any form of psychosis. It's not any out of any form of delusionment for, for the most part. In reality, we are literally, all the distractions that we once used to have, jobs, family, friends, uh, going out and doing things, going out to the bar and hanging out with people, drinking our lives away, going out to the gym, going to movies, going to concerts, like all of the things that we used to fill ourselves with, occupy our lives with, for the longest time, we weren't even able to do that, okay, because of lockdowns and everything. And now it's opening back up, but then, but see, we're being, we're being divided even more now. But in this solitary period, we actually have the ability to really start working on our level of discernment or our discerning abilities and really start to question what's going on around us. Like we, I, I, 
and for the most part, or in certain cases, we have nothing else to do but just observe and just watch and start to question. The more you watch, the more you observe, the more you listen, the more you start to think, you start to see, wait a second, that doesn't line up. Wait a second, that doesn't line up. Hold on, that doesn't even make sense. Wait, hold on a second, why is that happening? Well, it's been happening forever. What do you mean it's been happening forever? We've just been distracted and we couldn't see it and now we're right in our faces and we can't do anything about it because the system's already in place. And that's not true. It's not that we can't do anything about it. It's that we're led to believe that we can't do anything about it. And, and, and the more we try and stand up and, and rise up and everything, the more we they try and stamp us down, but they can't snuff us out forever, right? Okay, that's fine. I, this is not even where I was intending to go. I don't even know what is gonna come through today. We're gonna get into the cards in a few minutes. But I personally, this morning, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm moving a little slow. Um, the energies are really heavy and I was just thinking, you know, I could really use some encouragement right now. I don't really have an, an agenda when it comes to morning coffee, but damn, I could sure use some encouragement. And spirit was like, yeah, let's, let's get that out there for the collective. So here we are doing morning coffee. Um, okay. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to get into the cards. We're going to continue to use the Tarot Mucha deck. Okay. And then we're going to get to the clarifiers. And then cross the Oracle Bridge when we get there. Yeah? Whew. Alrighty, kids. Let's get into this and just see what the cards have to say for the collective. What spirit wants to talk to, speak with the collective about today. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear, act, clear and accurate representations of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, places, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. And please, please provide us with the best guidance for this moment in our lives, in our spiritual evolution, in our spiritual development, in our process of ascension. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys. So, colors that I'm seeing for the collective right now are purple and pink. Uh, I'm going to give this five shuffles, but let's talk through this. Purple and pink. First color that I saw was purple. This is one. And purple is representing the ability towards higher awareness, uh, higher vision and expansion that we have to gain at this time period. It might not seem that way. This is two. And many of us are feeling, are feeling through this and hearing this and are thinking, wait a second, that's ass backwards. Like that doesn't make any sense. How is what we're experiencing right now all of the, the turmoil, the pain, the drama, the, the illness, the, the fear, the panic. How is all of this providing us with an extra perspective I'm hearing or a higher awareness, higher wisdom, purple energy? Well, it's exactly these types of times, this is three, that allow us to gain more wisdom. Because it's these types of times that we are asked to consider the situation, consider the circumstances for ourselves. And like I said in the beginning of this session, we're kind of in this holding pattern or in this like limbo space where we're literally forced to surrender. Um, but in this time of idleness, we gain the ability to really start to observe, to perceive of what is going on around us. And that is where the wisdom can come in. So a lot of this forced 
solitude, a lot of this forced energy of needing to stay home or facing certain lockdowns or facing certain restrictions and all of that, there is a spiritual purpose behind it. And what I'm getting is that this is a time for us where the distractions are being stripped away from us so that we can really start to become aware of what is actually going on around us. Okay. That's where the purple energy comes into play. This is four. The other energy or the other color that I was seeing for the collective is pink. And this pink energy is unconditional love and divine grace. This is five. Oops, sorry. Let's try that again. This is five. And that pink energy was like encapsulated within the purple. Okay. So throughout all of this, there is still love being poured down to us from the, from the divine. All right. Um, but there's also wisdom surrounding it and the wisdom energy, ugh, it's not easy. It's a difficult energy to deal with, but that's why it's got a, this like ooey gooey center of unconditional love within it. Okay. So this is, so what you actually, you guys, what this is now being, I would now, what I'm now understanding this as is the un this is a lesson in love this is a lesson in unconditional love like we're getting almost like a pill of love the love is in the center but our outside love capsulate uh, encapsulating the love is wisdom is higher awareness is understanding and for for a lot of a lot of people that is a pretty bitter pill to swallow, isn't it? Many of us on this ascension journey that have been doing this awakening work, you know, it's not so bitter, <laughs> right? For others that are kind of on the outside, on the outskirts of this type of energy, it is quite a bitter pill. Um, but there's understanding that comes with it. There's wisdom that comes with it. And I, like I said, you guys, what I'm feeling is that this wisdom energy, the energy of this wisdom is not, it stings. But it stings to the ego. And if it's really stinging you, or if you have people in your life who are really getting stung by this bitter little pill, this jagged little pill, if you will, right? Um, it's necessary. There was something that I had for that, but now I don't remember. Um, if you have these people around you, or if you have people around you that are experiencing this, it, it's a necessary part of the ego dissolution, of getting your ego back in check. And instead of living with just the rational egoic mind, living from the heart. From the very beginning, you guys, even like last year when this all really started to kick off, I and many others were channeling the energies or the message of now is the time to really think about the collective, to really think about your fellow man. It, and, but that's not actually what's happening. This has actually become a tool for elite energies to manipulate even more. But therein lies the wisdom. Do you see? Do you see how a national or a, a global crisis is allowing us to see more of the underbelly of human society? The underbelly that was so masterfully hidden in distraction, consumerism, fame and fortune, just like fantasy, just like how we're manipulated by the media, by those in power. Case in point, case in point, I've been watching a lot of um, old sitcoms, right? Just to pass the time. And one of them that I started watching is Living Single. Like I, now, now I never watched that show. I was, when that show uh, started, it was back in like the fall of 1993. And I was six years old at that time. Um, and the show finally went off the air in 97. 
and I was only 10 by then, right? So I wasn't, I, I mean, I don't think I wasn't even allowed to watch that, but I wasn't, like, it wasn't even anywhere on my radar. But I've been watching it now, and the reason why I've been watching it is because uh, Turquoise Majesty and I have been talking a lot, and that show came up, and I, in, in, I, I recently got a Hulu, uh, I, re, I, I got a, another, I, I reopened my Hulu account just because I've been looking for more things to pass the time with. And it was there, and I was like, oh my god, I've never really actually watched this show, let's watch it. It's great, I'm enjoying it. But what I'm starting to realize is everything that we have been ingesting in terms of the media, movies, uh, television, the news, all our favorite shows, and like all the things that we grew up with, it's been programming us to live this consumerist, capitalistic lifestyle. And I understand that, you know, that was a, a product of the times, right? But there are so many references in that show to money, to status, to materialism. And yes, I understand it was a product of the times, but... Do you under, but, but what I'm starting to see is how the media and how all of these shows and everything has just been continuing to drive this narrative. And now here we are, 2021, watching the whole world crumble and many people out here are wondering why all of this is happening. I mean, look at our past. Look at the shows we used to watch. Look at what we still, to this day, everything that's on TV and in the media and all that. Like, look at what we're being crammed with, indoctrinated with. It's no wonder we've ended up here, is it? Yikes. <laughs> all right. Gosh, we're 20 minutes in and I still haven't even gotten any cards. Okay. So, I need the encouragement just as much as you guys do. And also the other thing that I'm, I'm recognizing is that this is very much, a, this time period is very much an emotional roller coaster, but it's not the type of emotional roller coaster that you would, that we're used to. This is the type of emotional roller coaster where we're all kind of feeling pretty, low, I guess, on the vibratory scale. Well, I'm going to speak for myself here. And if this, I identify, if you, if you resonate with this, then word. But for me, it's the type of roller coaster where it's like, I'm at this, I'm just, it's like, I'm at this like really low state constantly. And I'm working, working, working to pull myself back up, raise that vibration, get myself back up into a positive state clear up my, my, my thoughts and my emotions and, you know, overcome and work on healing and r just ri raising that vibration, right? And I get, and I get it, you know, I, I, I work myself up there. I'm like, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. And then something else happens. It's just like, fuck back, right back where I came from. <laughs> so it's not even like, so this feels like a different emotional roller coaster in the sense that we're not like, I'm not up and down, up and down, up and down, out of control, like, out of nowhere. It's literally, I'm down here, and I'm working on trying to get myself up, but then it pulls me right back down. Ugh. Okay, guys. Cards. God's first creator, man. Help us. What messages do you have for us, please? Source. God's first creator, what messages do you have for us? We really need some encouragement right now. We really need some encouragement right now. God's first creator, please, what do you have for us? Okay, let's see here. We have... Interesting. Okay. Eight of Wands is the overall energy. All right, so what source, God source creator is saying to us right now is the method or the, okay, first of all, there's a method to the madness, okay. 
But what Source is saying at this moment is that this time period is all about breaking yourself free. Eight of Wands. In terms of breaking yourself free, this is overall energy at the bottom of the deck. In terms of breaking yourself free, what we, what Source, what God Source Creator really wants us to focus on right now is where we want no more involvement. Four of Cups. Eight of Wands, Four of Cups. What do we no longer want, want to be involved with? What is not providing us with a sense of clarity, with a sense of healing, for some of us with a sense of duty um, or inspiration? What do we no longer want to be involved with? Versus what lights us up, Knight of Wands, okay? Okay, yeah. What's fallen out on the table here, we have two sets of information or uh, two sides of the equation. First thing that I want to talk about here is the Emperor with the Eight of Swords. So this is the controlling masculine um, influence, dominance on the collective right now. The control. Now, this is not in reverse. Nothing has come out in reverse here, but that's okay. Um, so this is representing the control. This is the representing the confinement that we are... In some cases, I'm hearing desperately trying to break free from. Um, it's interesting that this is coming out as the Emperor and not the Hierophant. But it makes sense, actually. Because a lot of the narrative that we're dealing with right now is control and confinement with, and with intentions to protect. And I put protect in quotes because... A lot of the dominance, also dominance is an, an energy that the emperor represents. So actually that makes sense also why it's coming out as the emperor. But a lot of this control, a lot of this dominance actually walks all over the ability for an individual to choose for themselves. Now... It's also a good, it also makes sense why this hasn't come out in reverse here because of what the Eight of Swords represents. The Eight of Swords represents confinement, represents being in a mental prison, represents not uh, being locked up. I mean, look at this woman. She's tied up and she's surrounded by a bunch of swords. And it's these swords of logic or straight um, intellect, okay? that are, that is, that are confining us. It's not a balance between logic or intellect and intuition or, or spirit or feeling. It's literally just straight up logic, straight up science or straight up facts. But the problem is, what are all the facts? This is another aspect of, of why this is coming through as the emperor and not the hierophant. Because there is a level of control and confinement here that is keeping a lot of really important information from the masses. But then that's being kept from us for protective reasons. It's not protective. It's confinement. It's control. That's another reason why this is coming out as the emperor and not the hierophant. It's control. And it's being touted as we're doing this for the good of the environment, for the good of the collective, when it, that's not the case at all. Because if you really pay attention, you will start to see how it's really those that are in power, those that are in the elite classes, the establishment energy, that's really benefiting from all of this. Everyone else is being left out into dry and, and left out to dry and is being trapped, wrapped up in this eight of swords energy. Well, we're looking, we're doing this for the good of the collective, but it's only a small amount that are actually benefiting. The other side of the equation is the chariot and the king of swords. The King of Swords comes through for the collective and acts, asks, acts, wow, asks us to be discerning. Quite frankly, you guys, though, the next question that just popped into my head after that is, 
How can you be discerning if you don't even have all the information? Thus, if you don't have all the information, why should you be continued to be confined here? And thus the King of Swords comes through for you and says, we're cutting that away. I can't get, I can't get a balanced objective opinion or no, not even an opinion. I can't get balanced objective information. Everything is so subjective right now. And it's subjective to the point that it benefits those in power. But I'm not going to allow that to confine me. And that's why Source is saying to us that this is a time of breaking yourself free. Do you see how the Emperor here is coupled with this Eight of Swords energy, which is an energy of confinement, of control, of power and authority between the Eight of Swords and the Emperor. But the overall energy of the Eight of Wands is the exact opposite of that. The Eight of Wands is freedom. The Eight of Wands is clarity. The Eight of Wands fosters an environment where the truth can come through because nothing is objecting it, nothing is stopping it. Thus, what I'm also getting not only from the King of Swords, but really from the Chariot, what I'm getting is what is driving your soul What when you get into a state of balance, okay, of harmony, of union within yourself, balance of the light and the dark, the good, the bad, the masculine, the feminine, your fears and your faith. When you balance that out, the Chariot, how do you drive forward? The King of Swords here says... It, the, the, the King of Swords energy is in favor of how you move forward when you are balanced. And it cuts away all of the things that work to confine you out of imbalance, imbalance, out of control, out of manipulation. The King of Swords cuts right through all of that and cuts a path forward for you to continue moving. This is a time of breaking ourselves free from the confinement, okay? And that's why, even though this time period right now is so rough, it's actually an immense blessing in disguise because each and every day, more and more and more and more information comes out and yet the less and less and less we know, right? So this is an opportunity for you to really start thinking for yourself. Or remain in confinement. Woo! All right. Let's go for some clarification. Yes? Excellent. I'm going to go with the Low Scarabeo deck. And I'm going to cl clarify these two sides of the equation. Okay? Um, five shuffles. One. We're going to start with the Emperor and then the, and the Eight of Swords, and then we'll move to the King of Swords and the Chariot. This is two. Three. here the controlling dynamic the emperor and the eight of swords so um before i pull any cards something just came through this the emperor and the eight of swords this energy is able to dominate and to keep us in this confinement because of the fact that they control or they're trying to control everything which means they're manipulating us with the information that we are allowed to accept. Not only are they limiting the, the, the information that we are able to receive, but they're telling you 
what it is you can and cannot believe. The Emperor with the Eight of Swords. Please, some clarity, spirit. <laughs> King of Wands is at the bottom of the deck so far. That's interesting. Do with that as you will. I'm not gonna... Clarity. <laughs> the Emperor and the Eight of Swords, please, spirit. Overall energy <clears throat> is the Ten of Pentacles. So first and foremost, what I'm getting from the Ten of Pentacles is that this is a, this is not an overnight process. Okay. Um, there, 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 there needs to be, there needs to be an intent, an intention towards working towards a long-term goal. And, and off the, off the cuff, it feels like that long-term goal is ultimately the healing and the rectifying of all of this, of, of the human dilemma, or at least where we find ourselves currently within the collective. Um, that's really vague. That's kind of what I'm seeing, though. It's like there's a long-term goal here of massive collective healing. But also, the, 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 less, the learning of this lesson, okay? This lesson in discernment, all right? But clarifying the Emperor and the Eight of Swords, here we have the Four of Swords, the King of Cups, and the Six of Cups. And I just saw 555 as I saw said all this. But what is this saying? This is saying in relation to this Emperor and Eight of Swords energy, in relation to this confinement energy, this confining, controlling, and dominating energy, we are being asked to stop, take a break, take a breath, take a breather, four of swords, and find some clarity within our minds. Okay? Work to release all of the propaganda and the fear-mongering that may be cycling through your head constantly. Do your best to find a clear space in your mind where you are free from whatever is being injected into your psyche from whomever in terms of whatever it is they're trying to get you to believe or assimilate into, okay? Clear your mind as best as you can. Find a balanced stage or at least a balanced space where you can take whatever is being thrown at you and put it right here and then anything else or the opposite side of the equation, put it right here. And then allow yourself to think about it and allow yourself to come to a rational decision for yourself, King of Cups. Work to put yourself in the eye of the storm so that you can understand what it is best for you to do moving forward. Now, there's also a set, another part to this. It's also the Six of Cups. So there is an element of the divine or spirit, God source creator, asking us to get to this level place, but then to really be as emotionally mature as possible and look back at the past and see how every all the indoctrination, all of the societal conditioning and all that, see how all of this has all of that has led us to where we are now. Everything from the past up until this date. Case in point me bringing up watching Living Single and recognizing all the indoctrination that was woven into those shows back in the day. Understand, allow the past to help you understand where the collective consciousness has been and how it's been evolving and then look at exactly where we are right now today. And look at exactly what we're facing today at this day and age. But in order for you to do that, you are going to need to be in a King of Cups energy. You're going to need to be as emotionally mature and balanced as possible. You're going to need to be as honest with yourself as possible. 
It's time to stop lying to ourselves about the indoctrination or about what's really going on around us, about what's really going on in, in, in realms or, 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 or um, in realms of power within our society. It's time to stop. Stop what? I'm hearing stop playing the blame game, okay? But that's coming through because we need to be able to take responsibility for where we find ourselves. It's not all their fault. It's not all their fault because we allowed it. Now, some of you are going to stand back and be like, whoa, Eric, like, don't blame me for this. I allowed it because I was told it's what I needed to do. Okay. But how discerning were you being? There is an aspect of that bitter little pill that we're having to swallow right now. And part of this healing process in the, at the moment for the collective is about taking responsibility for how we have allowed ourselves to get to this place. I'm guilty of it. I spent 30 years of my life trying to play the game, thinking that's what I needed to do. Allowing my, even though my spirit, ever since I was a child, my spirit, my soul, everything in me fought against that. I still fell prey to it. I still allowed myself to accept some things that were never right for me to begin with. Why? Because we wanted to be fit. We wanted to fit in because we wanted to be accepted because we wanted to be successful and we were being told this was the only way we could do it. I know it's not easy, but we have to take responsibility to a certain extent as much as we are liable for. We have got to take our responsibility for where we find ourselves and then change the game. King of Cups. We didn't get here by ourselves. And we didn't get here completely unaware. Many of us knew exactly what was happening, but we we chose to ignore it because we felt like we had no reason or we had no ability to do anything else. But that was a lie. And we have to come to terms with that individually. Okay. Okay, let's talk about... The King of Swords and the Chariot. Yeah? So, King of Swords and the Chariot, what message, what clarity can you bring to the collective for this energy, please, Spirit? What can you tell us, what else can you tell us about the King of Swords and the, and the Chariot? King of Swords and the Chariot. <sighs> this literally... Well, we're back to the King of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Okay, but this literally is an energy of what are you no longer in alignment with? King of Swords, the Chariot is being uh, clarified by the Four of Cups, which was the first card out. I just don't want to be involved with this any longer. Is what this card, is what this, the energy of this card represents for us right now. What do you just, what like, you're just tired of this. And you know what's interesting? What I'm getting from this is like we've been drinking, in some cases, societally, we've been drinking this cup of indoctrination, which has literally just been intoxication. Keeping us distracted. But now what it feels like here is what once used to get us real high or real drunk or really feeling good, like really in it, doesn't get us as high any longer. Doesn't feel the same any longer. Doesn't have the same kick. And it's th at that moment that we are able to step out of the fog and start to question everything. And we start to realize that Either we're not in alignment with this anymore, or maybe we never were. But indoctrination is a funny thing, isn't it? 
It's really good at getting you to believe something about yourself that's not, in tr not true at all. Isn't it good at that? We also have this with the Six of Pentacles, the Magician, the Star, and then the Ten of Wands. So the Ten of Wands obviously represents the burden that we've been carrying. The star represents the healing and then moving forward from that to something new, even though it's exciting. It might, I just heard it's exciting, but we don't know where we're going. But that's what we're clearing up, right? We're, we're clearing things up so that we can get to this new place. The magician is consciously manifesting. And what I'm getting here is consciously manifesting situations that are reciprocal where we're not being controlled and dominated by some elite force that really does not have our best interest in mind. Because if they did, let's be honest. Let's be honest, you guys. If they did, then, all, then there wouldn't be so much of a, a, an effort to silence or eradicate certain information. Another case in point, climate change. Climate change is real and we're experiencing the effects of it now. And we are at a point now where it is too late to change some of the things that we are locked in to be experiencing over the next few hundred years. I mean, it's not complete doomsday where we are, it, it's inevitable that we're going to destroy the planet, but we're already at, we've already crossed a threshold to which we are going to be experiencing the effects of our involvement in climate change for decades. Generations are going to be feeling this effect. How did we get here? A smear campaign, campaign, a smear campaign by the very industry, the fossil fuel industry, that has dominated and created quite a hell a lot of this climate change. They're not the only ones responsible. But you know what happened back in the 80s? This fossil fuel industry, certain companies like Exxon specifically, did research on the effects that the fossil fuel industry and other, other industries like it would have on the climate. And what do you think it came back with? Evidence that this is driving climate change. But then what happened to that information? The very information they developed on their own, it was suppressed. It was suppressed. It was intentionally changed. It was intentionally hidden. And now here we are. Indoctrination. Control, dominance. So what this is talking about, the chariot with the king of swords, this is talking about discernment. This is talking about cutting through the crap and allowing yourself to move forward in an, in a, in an alignment, in an aligned way. And consciously being aware of the fact that you don't want a part, you don't want any part of this any longer. Whatever this is, whatever you're feeling apathetic towards, whatever you're feeling like you just don't want to be involved any longer, whatever it is you are aware of that you are not in alignment with any longer, go for it. And instead of trying to be in alignment with what you know you're not in alignment with, go after what it is you know you're in alignment with. King of Wands, upright, Queen of Wands in reverse. Okay. Closing Oracle Guidance. Yes, that's going to come from the 
Lightworker Oracle. Here we go. Five shuffles, please. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right, closing Oracle guidance, please, Spirit. Beautiful. Card number 18, Ascension, the Rainbow Bridge. <laughs> you have been growing spiritually and your consciousness is expanding. It is transforming your experience of the material world from something you must control or conquer into a living expression of the radiant divine. As your appreciation and love for the material world becomes more unconditional, so too does the light that can flow into your aura, chakras, and physical body. As you physically expand, you may need more rest, healing, and meditation than usual to integrate this increasing degree of light and the consciousness it awakens within you. The rainbow bridge is a term for the channel of light that moves through your chakra system and along your spine, allowing spirit to enter your body and stimulate the development of your soul. This bridge comes to life as your consciousness is raised. It draws in higher energies that nourish and awaken your body, mind, and soul through your chakra system. As your chakras become stimulated by the increasing influx of spiritual light, a clearing process begins which supports the consequent expansion of your, uh, your consciousness. This clearing is like a spiritual detoxification. It clears blocks from your mind, emotional body, and physical body, as well as from your soul, such as unresolved past life issues. As these blocks are broken down and processed, emotional trauma stored in your organs and nervous system can be released and your energy field becomes more spacious. This creates room for an increase of spiritual light. As a result, you feel clearer about who you are and why you are here and others see more clearly when they are in your aura field. You become more powerful. Your energy field continues to clear itself, attracting more spiritual light becoming more visible beyond physical limits. Others can be supported by your light even if they cannot see your physical body. You are growing as a light worker and helping humanity in increasing ways whilst enjoying your own spiritual growth. I'm not so sure we're enjoying it at this moment, but okay, I'll take it, spirit. <laughs> you are opening to new consciousness now. With this comes new insight, awareness, and an awakening or deepening of your soul talents such as healing, clairvoyance, channeling, or telepathy. Your channels are being cleared and activated. Rest. Open up and allow. Be patient, be patient and trust in your process. If emotional content arises and you are concerned you might be falling back into old habits, do not be afraid. Find ways to express what you are feeling through writing, therapy, dance, music, and art, sound, and conscious movement. Explore your personal expression to allow for spiritual expansion. This oracle brings an additional message from spirit. Hold on. Ascension can be a wild ride. Anything is possible. The past is not an indicator. The future is not set. This is a moment to cultivate your deepest feelings of spiritual love and peace. Simply allow the genius of life to flow through you in whatever way it chooses. During ascension, your life can change quite dramatically. The rainbow bridge empowers us to rise from one reality into another. Even if your outer world doesn't change radically, internally you will feel as though you are living a different life. Eventually, the physical world changes will follow. 
Enjoy crossing the rainbow bridge into new consciousness, dear one. You have everything you need. You are ready for this. It is meant to be. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. Thank you for being here with me. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mm-hmm.